All right. It is time, everybody. It is time for the madness. Let the madness of March truly begin. And I got to tell you, I got I got to talk about this bracket. I got to talk about this bracket, man. This is one weird bracket, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much right now. This is one weird, weird bracket that we got to discuss. Um, let, let's go on over to the West region first. Let's go over there first, and then we'll get to the other stuff, you know, get to the other regions here. Uh, man, 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 it's, 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 it's been a weird Sunday, let me tell you that much. I've um, been following you along for quite some time, man. The, uh been here all season long with you uh, if, if you if you haven't been here on the channel please come on over I see a couple of y'all have or rather a couple of y'all are new a couple of y'all are new here to the channel but you know I'm excited I'm very excited you know for this season I'm excited for the season to come to an end because you know no, everything everything is uh, everything is coming together. Everything is coming together. I'll tell you that much. Uh, so you know, we we let let before we talk about all that, let's talk about the first four teams out because um, there was a bid thief today. So we'll, we'll talk about that bid thief in a moment when we get to the rest of the bracket. But the first four teams out: Dayton, Oklahoma, SMU. Texas A&M. A lot of people are arguing for Texas A&M to be in. Uh, I, I, I guess, I guess that actually kind of makes sense. I, I think Texas A&M is one of those teams that kind of deserves to be in. You know, they do deserve to be in there. Um, SMU was another one, but unfortunately, they lost to Memphis in the AAC tournament in the semifinals, so that did not work out. Oklahoma. Yeah, they shouldn't have made it in. in my honest opinion. Dayton is the first team out. Nowhere to be found is Xavier. Xavier had a tumble that was far worse than I imagined. Um, so they were not even close to the first four out. Dayton was. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the team that stole Dayton's bid from them in a moment here. We got to go to the West region first. Let's talk about the West region of the bracket. Gonzaga is the one seed, taking on Georgia State. Boise, Memphis is the 8-9. UConn, Mexico State, 5-12 matchup. Arkansas, Vermont, the 4-13. Alabama is the 6. They'll be taking on either Rutgers or Notre Dame. We'll talk about that. Texas Tech and Montana State, 3-14. 7 seed is Michigan State. They'll be taking on Davidson, the 10 seed. And 2 is Duke. Taking on C.S. Fullerton. Now, this bracket, this here, the West region here is a little bit of a difficult one. You know, it's a difficult bracket. Um, to really talk about. I think it's the hardest region, in my opinion. I really, I really do. You know, you, you know, I really, I really think this is one of the harder regions here in in this bracket. You know, you got Duke. Duke is dangerous. You got you got a Duke team that is very, very dangerous. Texas Tech is no slouch. They are a dangerous team. I personally would have put Duke as a three, though. I don't think this team deserves to be a two, but they're a two. Um, they just have they have some good wins. They have some good wins, but they have some really, really bad losses. So I don't think Duke is a two seed. I personally don't know if Coach K's final ride is going to go very far. I think it'll I think it'll go pretty far, but I'm not sure because I think again I think this bracket. This side of the bracket, at least, is very, very difficult because New Mexico State is dangerous. You got Arkansas, dangerous. Alabama, when they're playing efficiently, they're dangerous. You know, Rutgers, Notre Dame here. Now, this is a bit of a difficult one. Rutgers has the wins, but they have bad, bad losses. Similar to similar to Duke, they have, they, have, they have really, really good wins, but they have bad losses. They shouldn't even be in the field, but, you know, they are in. You know, there's nine Big Ten teams in the field. I don't know why there's nine Big Ten teams in the field. And we'll talk about the other controversies here from this field in a moment when we get to them. But I just don't I just don't think, you know, Rutgers is a tournament team. You know, despite the fact that they, you know, 
they they were top four in the Big Ten this year. I just don't see it. I just do not see it. Uh, we gotta go to the East. The East region is a uh, this is a tricky this is a tricky little region here. Baylor taking on Norfolk State. That's good that we don't have to see the black schools in you know both black schools in the uh, in the play, and that's great. North Carolina is an eight taking on Marquette. That's a nine. Eight nine match is a toss up. Always a toss up, and that one's gonna be one hell of a matchup. St. Mary's is a five, which is um that that that's actually pretty good. Pretty good for St. Mary's. We can all either Wyoming or Indiana. Now Wyoming doesn't really have a lot of good wins, but I think the Mountain West was a four bit league this year anyway. Again, um, you know, the, the, this the type of league that deserves it. Again, Texas A and M probably should be in the field. I personally don't see Indiana being that team in the field, but I mean, Indiana was the last team in, so I I, I do not think that Indiana should be in. Despite the fact that they played pretty well, they got to the Big Ten semis. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. But okay, whatever. UCLA is going to be taking on Akron. That's the 4-13 matchup. My Texas Longhorns are the 6-11 matchup with Virginia Tech. The ACC tournament champions. Oh dear Lord, if it, it's going to be it's going to be one rough rough game if Texas loses against Virginia Tech because we know how Texas does. So I'm anticipating that Texas is going to be that type of team. Purdue is taking on Yale, and Yale surprised a lot of people, surprised a lot of people with their win in the Ivy League Championship earlier this morning. Uh, you got Murray State, San Francisco. That's going to be a big one right there. San Francisco go back in the tournament after such a long absence. And then Kentucky is a two seed, taking on St. Peter's. Um, I do think Kentucky is a two. I don't think they were ever in contention for a one seed. I just genuinely don't. You know, they, they were in contention for a long while, but I mean, they they they've gotten they've gotten some losses on that on that resume there. They got they got some they got some good wins, but they got some they got some losses that kind of sting on the resume as well. So I you know, uh, when you break it all down, the East doesn't look like a uh, this looks like a very easy bracket. Like you, I could easily see Baylor and Kentucky. You know, despite the fact that Baylor is injured as hell, like, Baylor is injured as hell, I, I could easily see Baylor going all the way to, you know, maybe the Elite Eight, you know, them in Kentucky, Murray State, San Francisco, going to be some sleepers in this bracket, going to be some sleepers, you know, I, I could easily see, I could easily see multiple of these things, so, you know. anyway, the South region is an interesting region here, um, you got Arizona as the one, they really should be the number one overall seed. That's just my opinion. Arizona should be the number one overall seed over Gonzaga. Whatever. Wright State and Bryant are playing in one of the playing games. Congrats to Bryant. Congrats to Wright State Bryant. I think it's their first ever tournament appearance. Uh, Seton Hall, TCU, toss up there. Houston, UAB, that's going to be really, really interesting. Houston, UAB is going to be really, really interesting. South region is no slouch either. It's going to be an interesting bracket here. Illinois is the four seed. They'll be taking on Chattanooga. But here's the big surprise here. Colorado State, Michigan. Michigan as the 11th seed. Not even on the first four, you know, line. Not first four out. Not in the first four play-in. But as an 11th seed. And I get the argument for Michigan. I get the argument. All the metrics favor them and stuff. But you got to draw the line somewhere. This is a team that's 17 and 14. I don't care if they have one of the best resumes you know with you know the good wins and the bad wins and everything like that and unfortunately I, I did say they were in I, I do remember saying that Michigan played their way in by beating uh, Michigan State and Ohio State in the first week of March and unfortunately that that's what happened like even despite the fact that they did not go very far in the Big Ten tournament Michigan was in Michigan wasn't going to be in regardless I think you know I personally don't think they should have been. I think, you know, a Dayton or or an SMU or a Texas A&M should be in because, I mean, that, that's just me. You know, but Michigan is in. I, I don't understand it. I don't really see the need to have nine Big Ten teams in the tournament, but whatever. Whatever, man. Uh, the SEC is a three seed. Why are they a three seed? This is a two seed worthy team. They 
just beat Kentucky. They whipped Kentucky. They whipped Texas A&M in the SEC final. So I don't understand this, man. I don't understand what is going on here. Flip, flip Tennessee and Kentucky, because Tennessee is a two seed, in my opinion. Arizona should be the number one overall seed. Tennessee should be a two seed. Um, they'll be taking on Longwood, though, Tennessee will. That's going to be really interesting. Longwood has never made it to the tournament. They, they're in. Ohio State, Loyola, Chicago. That's going to be interesting right there. Loyola uh, watched them in the Missouri Valley Championship. What a game they played against Drake. You know, they came back, got their vengeance, you know, and did what they needed to do. We talked about that a week ago. And Loyola's going to be dangerous. Ohio State, I'm not really sold on that. I think that's why they're ranked, you know, as a, or rather they're seated as a seven. I just don't see Ohio State getting very far. Villanova, Delaware is going to be interesting. Villanova is a two seed. I knew they were going to be a two seed uh, based on the way they played, you know. They swept Providence. They won the Big East tournament, you know, despite the fact that Gus Johnson was whining about the threes, you know. I mean, I mean he, he was right. He was right about the threes being shot in that Big East tournament final. But, man, Gus, why are you whining, bro? But, anyway, Villanova deserves to be a two seed. I think they should be a two, in my honest opinion. And then, you know, the after the South is the final region, the Midwest region, another interesting region. Again, I think, you know, the... West region is the hardest. East should be pretty easy. Um, the other two are kind of toss-ups. The, the other two, the, the South and the Midwest, these are toss-ups, man. Kansas will be taking on the winner of either Texas Southern or Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, so that's going to be interesting there. Kansas as a one seed. Again, two Big 12 teams. These were two teams were confirmed basically as one seeds. You know, um, Again, Baylor has all the metrics in their favor. I personally don't think they should be a one, but I mean, they have all the metrics in their favor, so they deserve to be number one. You know? So that's going to be interesting. San Diego State and Creighton as the 8 9 matchup. That is going to be one hell of a matchup there. You got Iowa Richmond. That, again, bid stealer Richmond that stole Dayton's bid. Um, I. And I, I can see the arguments for Dayton, but I mean, I'm just like, I don't know. I really don't know, but I mean, the A-10 once again gets more than one team in the tournament, so I mean, you can't be mad at that. Uh, so, you know, Providence is a four, a dangerous, dangerous. I was surprised they were put as a 13. South Dakota State is 30 and four. That is not a 13 seed, my friend. That is at least a 12. I thought, you know, a lot of brackets were projecting to take on Texas before Virginia Tech crashed the party, and Richmond crashed the party too. But South Dakota State, they ain't no joke. They they whipped the Suffolk lead like it was nothing, and they they have, they have some big victories, though, South Dakota State does. My goodness, man. Um, LSU, Iowa State, the 6-11 matchup, that is not going to be, uh, that's not going to be, that's not going to be something that's going to be like, oh, this like this is not going to be an easy pick because LSU just fired their coach over some NCAA violations. Um, Will Wade just got fired, and Iowa State has been on a free fall themselves. Like my goodness, I have never seen a team, you know, aside from Xavier, who has just had it so bad. They've been down so bad for so long, and I don't I don't know who's going to win this. Um, Wisconsin's going up against the Patriot League champs, Colgate, toothpaste. That one's going to be interesting there. USC, Miami, 7 10 matchup. Going to be interesting there as well. Again, you know, the ACC, they got more teams in than, you know, you thought because they really only maybe one or two teams deserve to be in, you know, before March. But now I, I see the arguments for Notre Dame. I see the. Well, actually, no, I don't see the arguments for Notre Dame. They should be in. Uh, I kind of see the arguments for Miami. Not really. Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. But Virginia Tech, um, who won the ACC tournament, they should be in. Duke should be in. North Carolina should be in. I'm just kind of concerned. I'm kind of confused about Miami. Um, but then again, you know, Miami was one of those teams that did beat Duke. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of confused. And then the last two, the last two seed, Auburn, they should be a two seed. Uh, they'll take on Jacksonville State. Remember, Jacksonville State got the a sun bid because of Bellarmine, you know, beating Jacksonville in the a sun championship. So, all right, let's get to my final.
final four predictions, who's going to who, who I think will win the national championship. I'm not doing a whole bracket because, you know, I, I, I genuinely am not feeling it. And I know this might be a popular pick, but I genuinely think, you know, I genuinely think that Gonzaga will win a title this year. And I said this last year, and I was wrong because Gonzaga got boat raced by Baylor. But I think, you know, with the way the toss-up the South region is, you know, the South region is a toss-up. Uh, Kansas at times has shown a lot more weakness. Arizona has shown resiliency. So I think Arizona will come all the way to the national championship. They'll beat somebody out of the Midwest. I don't know who from the Midwest. Probably, you know, maybe Kansas or Auburn. You know, but I think it's going to be Gonzaga that will win it all this year. They'll be taking, I think that Gonzaga and Arizona will be in the national championship. I personally think that. And I probably could be wrong because it's me, because I'm wrong on a lot of things. So pencil it down Arizona, Gonzaga in the national championship. Who do I have in the final four? Arizona, Gonzaga, obviously. I think Kansas and Kentucky will be the other two teams that make it to the Final Four. I just don't see Kansas keeping up with Arizona, and I don't see Gonzaga losing to Kentucky. I just, I mean, I think Oscar Sheepway is going to go off, you know, against Gonzaga. But I think Gonzaga will have more tank to stymie Kentucky because Kentucky is another one of those teams that's, you know, at times kind of kind of weak, you know, when, when, it, when it really counts. So, you know, that's my Final Four. My national, my, my two teams that are going to make it to the national championship are Gonzaga and Arizona, and the team that I think will win it all, cut down the nets, and cement Mark Few as a legend, you know, is Gonzaga. If it's not Gonzaga and, you know, I'm wrong, then that's two straight years I'm wrong because I'd like to not be wrong. But I was right about last year being, you know, that Gonzaga and Baylor would take it all the way to the championship. So watch, so watch, you know, of course, this is March Madness. This isn't the 2021 season where it was a bubble. This is going to be a lot weirder. So, you know, it's March. March Madness is back to being normal, which is completely weird, completely bizarre, completely mad, you know, and everything like that. So until then, you know, until later before we discuss the national championship and how that goes I will see you all then, you know, you know, on April 4th after the national championship. That's it. That's all I got to say about this bracket because, I mean, again, there, there are some problems with it, I think. But, you know, personally, it's it's going to be as madness as usual. So what can I say? So see you all on April 4th to discuss the national championship recap and everything like that. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you in a few minutes here as we discuss this week in North Football. Take care, everybody.